What happens in general when we're adding a forcing term to a spring that has damping? Let's look at the situation. So we have mu second plus gamma u prime plus ku, that is the model of the spring with damping, gamma, and we're forcing it with a forcing term that is a constant, f0, times cosine of omega t, with omega the frequency of the forcing. So previously we used the same frequency as the frequency of the spring itself, but it might be a different frequency. For example, you might be forcing it faster than the natural frequency at which the, the solution is going. And in general, the, so the solution for this non-homogeneous ODE has the shape that we expect, a block that depends on the homogeneous solution, so C1, U1 plus C2, U2, and a block that depends on the forcing term, so sine and cosine of omega t with the frequency of the forcing term. The first block comes from a dampened spring. So we already know it has a negative exponential. Because of the negative exponential, it tends to zero for t tending to, to infinity. So that block is always the transit solution. The other block, on the other hand, has sine and cosine, and they're not disappearing any time. So that part is called the steady state solution, or the forced response, is a response that comes from forcing the system. We can, when we're looking at the steady state solution, rewrite it in a new form. Instead of writing it as a sum of sine and cosine of the same frequency, we can write it as r time cosine of omega t minus a delta term. R is called the amplitude, omega is the frequency, and delta is the phase angle. It shifts your starting point. So if delta is equal to zero, cosine of omega t at t equal to zero is one. While if delta is different than zero, you're shifting your cosine function a little bit on either side. If you do the calculations, and the calculations are omitted in this case, you can work them on your own or not, You'll notice that the, free, that the amplitude of your uh, steady state solution, your forced response, is something that depends on F0, the force of your forcing term, the, the amplitude of your forcing term, divided by capital delta. And the cosine of small delta and the sine of delta have also formulas depending on, on the terms of your ODE. You don't have to learn these formulas by heart. We're just looking at how this um, force response behave depends on the, depending on the, on the forcing term. And we have this delta that is fairly important. It's square root of m squared times the square of omega squared minus omega naught squared plus gamma squared omega squared. Gamma, uh, omega naught squared is a natural frequency that we would have in the spring system if we wouldn't have damping. So it's k divided by m. And it follows that if you want to non-dimensionalize things, you divide r by f0 and you multiply it by k, and that gives you a nice format of this function that is a bit messy, admittedly, but something we can still study. So we have one part of rk divided f0 that is 1 minus the force and frequency divided the natural frequency squared, the whole parenthesis squared, plus capital gamma, the same fraction between the, the forcing frequency and the natural frequency squared, all of this at the power minus 1 half, where capital gamma is this gamma squared minus mk. Again, I just want to, you to look at these functions, not learn them by heart. We just want to see how uh, the amplitude of the force response can be fidgeted with by changing some parameters. So for omega, the frequency of the forcing tending to zero, we have that the ratio between the 
amplitude of the force response times k divided the amplitude of the forcing tends to 1. So for the amplitude of the force, uh, the frequency of the force response tending to 0, we have that the amplitude of the response tends to F0 divided by k. While for the forcing, the frequency of the forcing, omega tending to infinity, R tends to 0. Is there a maximum between these two values? So we have a value at omega equal to 0, we have a value at omega at infinity. Does R just tend from F0k to 0, or does it have a maximum in between? So what we have to compute is the derivative with respect to omega of Rk divided F0, and set that equal to 0. That require that if we solve for omega, gives us an omega max. Uh, in the book, there is a typo, and in the slides, there is a page of calculations to show you that how the typo happens, and why I'm sure that the other, the other formula is actually correct. We have that omega max squared is equal to omega naught squared times this coefficient, 1 minus gamma squared divided to mk. What does omega max mean? It means that if the forcing term has the frequency omega max, then the amplitude of the response is maximum. Think of it like you want to test a spring and you're testing different frequencies at which are giving the input until you get the biggest one. Omega max is the biggest one. So with this formula, we notice that omega max is smaller than omega naught. So the peak of the, of the response happens for a forcing term that has a frequency that is smaller than the natural frequency of the spring. For gamma tending to zero, omega max tends to omega zero because this gamma squared divided 2 mk term tends to zero. So we only have the equality omega max equal omega zero. What is the amplitude of the force response when you choose as forcing, as the amplitude of the, sorry, as the frequency of the forcing term exactly omega max? Well, that is r max that is equal to f zero divided delta max. And we can do the calculations, and that becomes F0 divided gamma omega 0 times square root of 1 minus gamma squared divided k for mk. For gamma tending roughly to 0, 1 over 1 minus gamma squared divided for mk is roughly equal to 1 plus gamma squared divided 8 mk. Comes from uh, asymptotic analysis. If you're familiar for that, with that, that's great. If you're not, don't worry. But that means that we can simplify our R max for gamma very small to be almost F0 divided by gamma omega 0 times 1 plus gamma squared divided 8 mk. If we look at this, uh, in particular, the, the, pre, the first function uh, formula in the beginning, we notice that this gamma squared divided 2 mk is bigger than 1, then omega max is imaginary. That means there is no maximum. That means that r goes from a maximum at omega equal to, omega equal to 0 and decreases. Notice how gamma squared divided 2 mk bigger than 1 uh, has a switch at gamma squared divided mk equals to 2. But the critical damping uh, threshold is actually gamma squared divided mk equals to 4. So in the omega max becomes imaginary before gamma crosses the critical damping um, threshold. So based on what we had before, for gamma almost equal to 0, r is almost equal to f0 divided gamma omega 0. And uh, omega max is roughly equal to omega 0. But we just said that gamma can be very small, and we are dividing by gamma. So in this case, we know that r can actually become very big. We call this resonance. 
the idea that you are giving a, a forcing, a periodic forcing to a system, and the reaction is actually bigger than the forcing that you gave it. Because here we are dividing F0 by something that is almost zero. So R will become bigger than F0. Examples of good resonances are, for example, seismographs. You want to amplify small oscillations such as you can detect them. But there are also bad resonances, really bad resonances, and kind of cool resonances. And I gave you some examples. Um, an example of a bad resonance is the Millennium Bridge in London. This bridge was opened in 2000 for the new millennium and had the bad characteristic of having a resonance with the steps of people. So if too many people were stepping on the bridge, it would go into resonance with their stepping. A case of really bad resonance that became fairly famous because it was so extremely bad is the Tacoma Bridge. This was a big bridge in Tacoma uh, that was going through, through a valley. And very unfortunately, and there's still a lot of discussion about why that happened, the bridge entered in resonance with the speed of the wind. That's actually quite unlikely to happen. But because the wind is so stable in that region, we could actually study this, the, the situation for a couple of days and we have nice footage of what happened. And you see this bridge having huge waves. A bridge doesn't usually have waves reacting to the wind. And I'm going to link another video that is finding the resonant fre frequencies of a small wooden bridge. This, are, this is an experiment carried out by some uh, group of friends that just started bumping on the bridge until they could see the resonance happening. Coming back to the formulas, for gamma tending to zero, we have that R tends to F0 divided M absolute value of the difference between omega naught squared and omega. So if you're letting gamma going to zero and omega naught and omega getting closer and closer, you have that the real resonance tends to infinity. So in this code, I'm going to start by assuming that m is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1. So capital gamma is equal to gamma squared. And I'm going to write r as a function of omega and uh, gamma because I want to draw a nice plot, plotting r divided f0 with respect to uh, omega and gamma. So this is r over f0. And it's a function of omega and gamma. I'm going to also fix omega naught being equal to 2, for example. Um, Actually, I want to draw r over f0 as a function of omega over omega naught. So I don't have to define omega naught anywhere. And here, I'm just going to plot the, uh, I'm just going to write the formula of rk divided f0, that is parenthesis parenthesis 1 minus uh, omega over omega naught. And I want this to be squared all of this squared plus gamma squared times omega over omega naught squared. And all of this is at a power minus one half. To be nice, to have a nice setting, I'm going to put these three dots and put it to a new line so that it's easier to read. I have put everywhere dot products and I should put dot multiplications as well because I'd like at times gamma to be a vector and at times omega over omega naught to be a vector. And then I'm going to go on a for loop over values of gamma that I want to plot. So for gamma local equal, and here I'm going to plot values of gamma that I am interested in. For example, we start with gamma very big, then we go smaller, 3, 2, 1, 0 
and 0 0.1. I'm going to plot r over f0 as a function of omega over omega naught vec that we haven't defined yet and gamma log. Oh, uh, on the horizontal axis, I want this vector that I haven't defined yet. At the end, I'm going to pause for one second. Uh, actually, I'm going to pause the whole computation until I hit the key so I can talk to you while, while it's running. And then I'm going to end this. That means that I still have to define this vector and I want it to go from 0, 0 0.1 to, let's go to 4 and see if this is enough to see everything that we want to see. I'm going to save this and call it plotting of R. Then I'm going to go to my command window and call plotting of R. And there is a problem. Uh, there is somewhere in which I forgot. Oh, here. In which I forgot the dot. So I cannot take the power of minus one half of a vector. I need to do it element wise. So I change that. And here is what I retrieve. For. Oh, yeah. I. This was the first value. So gamma lock is equal to 10. And then we can keep going. This is gamma lock a bit smaller. This is gamma lock is equal to 3. So gamma is decreasing over time. And you see how suddenly we have a shift in which there is a maximum in the amplitude that is not at 0 anymore. So you see here how it starts at the, the limit for gamma tending to 0, uh, gamma tending to, to infinity, so very big. And there, our max was at zero, and now it suddenly has a maximum that is not at zero. And it starts becoming, having a bigger and bigger peak, roughly at the point in which omega over omega zero is equal to one. So omega and omega zero are very close. So this is what we expect. Let's look at it again. At the first time, we have our max at zero. So when, um, when you increase the forcing of the forcing term, the amplitude is actually decreasing. Then it's smoothened, then it has a maximum. At, you, immediately you see that it's quite close to one actually. And it becomes bigger and bigger. And here is where you see the resonance. The amplitude of our forced response is 10 times bigger than the forcing that you gave.